Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. One of the coolest family of birds out there and probably one of the most misunderstood family of birds, you know, simply by name implication for a lot of people that I'm telling you how many there are a lot of people don't even think these birds are real. Uh, they just think they come in clocks. So we're talking about the cuckoos, the cuckoos. And, and yes, we do have cuckoos in North America. We And I'm going to cover all of them today. Everybody thinks about cuckoos and they think of the clocks, you know, and they think about uh, possibly them only being in the old world, we call it, in Eurasia and that area over there. And those are, cuckoos are pretty famous for their sound. Yes, that's where the clock sound comes from. Um, but they're also famous because they lay their eggs in other birds' nests, kind of like our cowbird does. So they, a lot of birds, a lot of people that know of that don't like them. Don't worry, our birds don't do that very often. They can do it occasionally. Uh, but I thought what we would do was cover the cuckoos, and we have we have three. Well, arboreal cuckoos, as we call them, they live in the trees. And we have one ground cuckoo we're going to talk about, which is pretty darn cool. And people don't know it's a cuckoo, but it is. All right. So we're going to start out with uh, the most common widespread, uh, probably, uh, at least for us, it, 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 especially through the southern part of its range and, and, and extending north. I've got the map here, but this is the yellow-billed cuckoo. Um, you know, I, growing up and started sort of my birding in North Carolina, they, they were known as rain crows uh, growing up there, and I'm, that is a nickname that uh, several, uh, a lot of the, the uh, cuckoos do have, and they believe it is because they do, they do tend to start calling when it starts to rain, but, but of course it doesn't rain every day, but they have to call every day. They, you know, they're same as other birds. They, they do call for the, for the advertise for their mates and things like that. But that is one of the more common name nicknames or local names for the cuckoo group. And this, uh, the yellow bill cuckoos, fascinating birds. They're uh, a lot of neat characteristics. They, they kind of move slowly. I've, you know, I've heard it described that they run along limbs like a mouse rather than, you know, really flying very much, but they do. I mean, I've, I've seen them actually luna moths and fly back with them and a big moth sticking out each side of their bill. Uh, very, very entertaining. And I'm going to play their song for you because, like I said, they're known as rain crows, and you, you probably want to hear what they, they sound like uh, because they, uh, it, it, they are pretty famous for that. And this sound, a lot of people think, you know, they think it's more of a jungle-like sound, a tropical sound. So let's play this for you real quick. So it's not a musical song by any stretch of imagination, like some of our great songsters but it, it is distinctive, and we, we look forward to hearing that every spring. You know, they migrate to the tropics in the winter, and we, you know, it's one of the birds that uh, when we're on our spring bird hikes, it inevitably gets brought up, especially when you get a little bit into the early May. Or May. Anybody heard a cuckoo yet? Has anybody heard a cuckoo yet? That's what we're listening for, uh, and they are. They, they, they are famous for kind of their diet. They eat those fuzzy caterpillars. You know, I talked about tent caterpillars uh, recently, uh, and they are very fuzzy caterpillars. And a lot of birds can't eat them. They don't eat them. But cuckoos have learned to roll them and squish down that hair and so they can swallow them. And they also have learned that they also... Uh, will actually slough off. The, the, if there's any spines in their esophagus, then they, they can actually slough that off and cough it back up, kind of like an owl pellet to get rid of those excess hairs that may have got stuck in there. So uh, really cool adaptation. Now, of, of you know, all these cuckoos I'm going to talk about, we're going to talk about black black bill cuckoo, mangrove cuckoo, and the ground cuckoo that I'm not going to reveal just yet. Um, the... <laughs> They all have zygodactyl feet, which is two toes forward and two toes back, which we talk about with woodpeckers. They're really famous for that. And some of the birds are pretty like ospreys and things like that. But, but cuckoos have that and they do run along limbs. Uh, you know, they do fly and catch food, like I said, but they're kind of famous for running along limbs and, and grabbing prey. Um, I know I've seen a couple of cuckoos down in uh, Jamaica. Uh, with large cuckoos, and they run along and catch lizards and frogs, and they, they hunt that way. And, and there are lots of cuckoo species worldwide. Um, but our, you know, these in our country, we, we really, they're kind of a prized bird. We literally like to see them because they are hard to see. You see by the colors of this yellow bill cuckoo, and we'll get another picture up here. Um, uh, they, 
they're you know the tans and the and the rufus in the wings and in the tail they really blend in pretty well of the vegetation so um this is the time of year one of the reasons I, I, I kind of timed this program for right now in the you know the early fall is this is the latest time that you can see them an easier time because a lot of the leaves are starting to fall and you can see them a lot though flying around and yes they are a late bird here they tend to stay a little bit later than a lot of our neotropic migrants um and some years in their early their arrival um, they don't get here until maybe some years until June. Uh, we've actually documented them actually nesting once in the southern states and then coming up here into this part of the world and nesting for a second time. So let's get the map up here, I'll show you real quick where their range is. You can see where they winter, the blue on the map down in the tropics um, and migrate through Mexico and, and uh, Central America. But they nest across the U.S. and down into the little bit to the desert southwest, but mainly the eastern two thirds of the country. Um, uh, they, they nest up in those regions and they're really cool. Some of the things, one of the things most fascinating I read about them many years ago, this is not the clearest picture, but this is a juvenile bird. And if you look for it, you can't see his tail because they, uh, it, it's very short, but these birds, young birds grow so fast. Um, it's, it, some people say they, they're, their growth rate of their feathers is so fast. If you actually watched it long enough, you could actually see it change. You could see those feathers grow. That's how fast they grow. And they want to talk about one of the fastest nesting period in, in the shortest times in a nest from laying eggs to the birds leaving the nest is only about 17 days, which is amazingly short. We usually say two weeks to hatch and two weeks to fledge, but this is a 17 day total nesting process, which is incredible. And they grow really, really fast. And they're amazing. We see them this time of year uh, hopping around with those little short tails, you know, that are starting to grow. So we love the cuckoos. What a great group of birds. Now, that by far for us is the most common species. Now, if you live much further to the north, you you know you can see where the, the this bird's range doesn't occur very much in the south. In, in tropics is where it, mi it it migrates to in the winter, but in the northern part of the range, and that is the black-billed cuckoo. Um, and of course, well, it does have a black bill versus the the yellow bill of the yellow bill cuckoo. Um, but it also has red a ring around the eyes. Uh, and that is something we look for. And these birds, I don't expect to find them, especially here in Missouri, in forest. We like, I look for these birds in um, low vegetation clumps uh, in prairies, in open, in, in really open grasslands and stuff where there's there's tree lines and there's, uh, you know, clumps of uh, along creeks and streams. That's where I have seen uh, black bill cuckoos in our areas most commonly. Now, I know that you, that, We've got birders I've birded with that live, you know, from Minnesota and the northern states, and they see black bills more than they do yellow bills that far north. Um, and so they are uh, they're, they're much more common. But many of the traits are the same. They have the zygodactyl feet, two forward and two back, and they and they're and again that short just uh, uh, period nesting period for them uh, very quickly. Uh, the reason these guys love. Uh, you know, uh, uh, crickets and caterpillars and in and, and years where like cicadas, and all, all the cuckoos take advantage of that food. And, and I said earlier that the old world cuckoos lay their eggs in other birds' nests. Our cuckoos, the yellow bill, the black bill, the mangrove that uh, is coming next, only do it occasionally. And, and what I understand is that in the, in years where there's lots of food, I mean, really like, like cicada booms and things like that, they will actually lay their eggs and sometimes in another cuckoo's nest or in a, a great catbird's nest, American Robin, some of the, some of the, those birds. Um, and, and of course that is, they, they won't they raise as many babies as they can. And with that much food around, they feel like they'll survive. That's one of the, the theories that's out there. So the black billed cuckoo, um, it's much thinner bill, the red around the eye, just a, 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 a neat bird to the north. And then the other cuckoo that, of course, that we don't get to see uh, is the mangrove cuckoo, which is uh, down very much in the mangrove, South Florida. You know, maybe some of them on the coastal states, but down the tri if you go to the Caribbean, they, those islands are really good for them. Um, oh, I didn't play the call of the, the black bill cuckoo. Let's do that real quick because I know you wanted to hear that. But the black billed cuckoo, let's do that one. Mm 
this bird, this this picture was taken of, it was on one of our um, uh, pra prairie trips. We went to Dunn Ranch Prairie in northern Missouri. I uh, had a group that day, and this bird, we saw it out the window. This is taking the picture. It was taken right out of the window of the car, um, and it started calling, like doing that very call, moving up and down the 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 hedgler along the the fence and it was prairie on the other side and prairie on both sides but this row of uh, you know uh, bushes and shrubs it was hunting in there but it started that very call i mean we could hear him very well moving up and down and we got some the other you know, people on the trip got the good pictures too uh there it's kind of a prize bird it was a real nemesis bird for me but i it took me years to they actually see a black billed cuckoo. They uh, they escaped my <laughs> my bird watching efforts for several years. So, it, it, but I finally got them. So, one that has I haven't gotten this a, a nemesis bird is this mangrove cuckoo I talked about. And mangroves tell you they live in those mangrove swamps in the south, and they uh, are just like all cuckoos. They're pretty secretive and they're pretty hard to find. Um, and a friend of mine, because I was uh, talking about going to the Florida, going to be down there and I was looking for him. And I'd ask a buddy of mine who's bird watched all over the world. And I said something about finding him. He said, Mark, if you had to go find a yellow bill cuckoo right now, could you do it? I'm like, crap. You know, no, you, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty secretive. You really have to be out birding and they usually find you. And he's right. I mean, they, they, they just go where they want to and they're, and they're pretty secretive. And, uh, but we love it when we do find them. So the mangrove cuckoo sounds like this. And a lot of people, of course, think that sounds like a frog. Uh, and in that environment, you would have lots of frogs. And here's the map. Um, you see all coastal and where the mangrove swamps that we were all around in Central America, down in the Caribbean and, and, and South Florida uh, are the places to find mangrove cuckoos. Really cool. Wish we had them up here, but we don't. Now, I promise the one cuckoo that doesn't live in trees and shrubs. Um, in our country, we have a, like one of the ground cuckoos, and there are other ground cuckoos in the world, there, especially in the, um, the Central America and South America. There are lots of ground cuckoos, but we only have one, and it is but a dum dum the roadrunner. The greater roadrunner is a cuckoo. It is a ground cuckoo, uh, and they are awesome. You know, I, I need to do a whole program on nothing but, uh, but uh, Roadrunners. But, uh, you know, people love Roadrunners. And, you know, of course, the reputation of the comic strip that in the TV, Saturday morning TV shows. And really, uh, that's pretty bad because I think what I read is that, you know, uh, coyotes can run like 43 miles an hour. And that's about twice as fast as Roadrunners can. And so the old beep beep and outrunning them and everything. Um, yeah, but it makes for a good kid's show. But um, they have those long tails and they they turn those tails around and put the tail up in the air and they'll twist them around. And the geococcus is uh, uh, the genus, the, the, the scientific name for them, the species name for them. But they are attractive birds and they are ferocious predators. I was talking to um, a friend today about them. They live in New Mexico and they said, man, they eat everything. <laughs> they, you know, they eat poisonous animals, they eat scorpions, they eat rattlesnakes, they eat lizards, they'll eat hummingbirds, they'll snatch them off a feeder, jump up. And uh, so when you live out in the West where these guys are in the South, you really do have to be aware of them because they will uh, eat other birds. And they, it's just the nature of that bird. And they are, they are very I mean, they're, they're kind of comical looking, but they're very attractive birds and uh, we love to see them. But the, uh, the range map for these, of course, is the uh, mainly, of course, southern. And we think of them as desert birds. We think of them as, you know, Texas and New Mexico and Arizona. But my first the one I ever saw was actually in Arkansas running across uh, between two pastures down there. And we actually have them in South Missouri. Uh, so they're 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 much broader range than I think a lot of people think they are. And I know a friend of mine was bird watching down in um, the uh, in South Missouri, you know, and he was, uh, he said he heard this uh, roadrunner calling and he's like, where's that coming from? You know, Cause he's looking for it low. Like you would expect for a roadrunner. It was sitting in the top of like a 40 foot tree and it was up there calling. And this is what they sound like. Mm 
Yep, sounds very dove-like or even owl-like, uh, but he was he was perched way up in the tree doing that, you know, trying to attract the mate. So uh, the the Roadrunner's fascinating. Eat tons of stuff, and they have the two toes forward, two toes back, because I go tackle feet, uh, and and they do. They run they run rather than fly as much as they can, um, but they are ferocious predators. And if you've seen me do my program on birds banging into the, your, your your windows in the spring trying to chase off the reflection i always tell you that the people down in uh, the southern states will tell you that they will actually attack your hubcaps on your car they see their reflection in the hubcaps and they're trying to run off that rival male and they're jumping up and flying in and uh, and banging into the the seeing the reflection and they can't understand why that that uh that other road runner won't leave so the, I'm telling you, the cuckoos are a fascinating group of birds. I love them. Uh, if you've never seen one, please, you know, get on a spring, especially spring and summer bird hike. Uh, even now is a great time to get out and look for the cuckoos, cuckoos, and then listen for that call. You know that that is that rain crow call, as they call it. Whether you're in the north with the black bills, or down south with the yellow bills, or the, uh, Florida with the mangroves, they're just a great group of birds and a lot of fascinating facts about them. So I thought you might enjoy something a little bit different than birds that, that visit your feeders all the time. So it's a great idea for a program. If you liked it, please give us a, a like, give us a share. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And until next time, come on, let's talk birds.